Well, hey, everyone, Mike Pachenik for Neighborhood TV, joined now by Titania Jordan. She is the Chief Parenting Officer at Bark Technologies. Thanks for making time for us today. Thank you for having me. So for parents at home who don't know what Bark Technologies is, please tell us. Sure. Bark Technologies helps to protect over 6.6 .6 million children across the globe. And we do this by using artificial intelligence to connect to children's devices, smartphones, accounts, text, email, social media. Our algorithm then analyzes the content and context of those digital interactions and then sends parents and caregivers alerts when there are potential problems, problematic content or problematic people, and also gives parents best recommended next steps for, okay, now that you've got this alert, what do you do? How do you talk to your kids about this? So that's our flagship product. In addition to our, our algorithms and our alerts, we offer a full suite of, of tech tools for parents from screen time to filtering to even a safer smartphone for children. Yeah, I was going to say, you just launched a phone that has all this built into it, right? Yes. So many kids are getting smartphones <laughs> at such young ages, and they are not inherently safe. So we made one that is. Yeah, we fought that battle in my house, so I'm well aware of that situation. So let's talk about this recent warning you put out uh, about this filter that makes you look much younger. It's sort of the fountain of youth, which is great, but it also is a double-edged sword. Why is this so concerning? You know, it's crazy. There's so many things that are crazy about it. First of all, the tech, it's amazing. It's amazing that at 42 in real time, I can be utilizing an, a filter, regardless of what platform it's on, but this happened to be on TikTok. And it transforms me in real time to the you know 13 to 16 year old version of myself. And it really works. You know, I had I had family members, I had an aunt comment like, oh my gosh, this looks like you <laughs> back in the 80s and 90s. You know, it's creepy. Um, and so while the tech is, is amazing, it's also terrifying because we know, based on our work at Bark, the rate at which children are being groomed online, uh, approached by predators or strangers. A lot of parents hear the word predator and they think, oh, not my child. It won't happen. That, that doesn't happen a lot. Well, it does. And if predator doesn't catch your attention, think about strangers. Plenty of those on the internet. And they are now using this tech, these filters, to appear to be the same age as your child, like one of their peers, groom them and then form a relationship with them that is harmful. And there are some real world examples that you've highlighted in which people have done this. Give us an idea of the kinds of things you're seeing people use this filter to do in terms of grooming and getting these kids to do things they shouldn't be doing. Right, and I, I do wanna point out, you know, this particular filter I used, it was on TikTok and it's called the teen filter. And if you're just using it on TikTok as it stands, it's showing you the top and bottom comparison. But the problem is that people can, you know, crop the video and only use the younger half or just the fact that this tech exists, there are ways to use it in not this way. So it's not obviously, you know, a, an adult using something to look younger. And the problem, the, the, there's so many problems, but you know, the FBI recently released a warning to the public that sextortion is on the rise amongst children. Teen boys, for example, are a primary target. They get on Instagram. They think they're talking to, you know, a cute love interest that appears to be their age and showing some interest in flirting. And all of a sudden they've sent some photos or videos that they later regret. And it turns out it's not going to someone their age. It's to an adult who then turns around and threatens them for money threatens their reputation, threatens to distribute that info. And we saw recently just out of Texas, a 16 year old high school player, straight A student from a good family, incredibly loved by the community, took his own life, died by suicide because he was a victim of sextortion. Hmm. The video you posted on Instagram organically went viral, right? More than a million views. Like what did you make of that? That so many people were just shocked that this exists. You know, content creator to content creator, it's amazing the time and the work that goes into creating educational, powerful, visually and audioly compelling content that resonates. Yet this stupid 15 second thing I made in my car has now over 1.6 million views and it's still blowing up. It's insane. So in my house, the rule with my son, who's 12, who 
finally got a smartphone is at any time, any place, I can take your phone. I'm going to read your text. I'm going to look at what you're doing online. But that's not always enough, right? So what what else, aside from putting Bark on the phone, which we know is uh, what you would like, but what else should they be doing, parents, that is, to keep track of what their kids are doing on their smart devices? So in addition to using a monitoring tool, Bark, for example, um, which is the best, you've got to pay attention to the the signals that are emanating from your child regarding their behavior and mental health. Are they sleeping more? Are they sleeping less? Are they up, are they up all night on their phones? Are they allowed to have phones in their bedroom or gaming consoles or smart televisions in their bedrooms at night? Where do they even charge those things? How are their grades? Are they dropping? Uh, do they lack interest in things they typically used to be interested in, whether it's friend groups or activities or hobbies? Or do they seem more withdrawn? anxious, depressed, worthless, anything that seems off about your child that raises not even a red flag, but maybe a yellow flag, that something might be up, something might be up. And chances are you will find the clues to that buried deep in their digital signal. So Bark can surface those to you. You can also go digging for those. I will say that Children are really good about hiding those things, whether it's just using Snapchat because that content disappears. They have the four eyes, for my eyes only vault. Um, you know, children will delete photos, delete texts, keep them in a vault album, keep them in the hidden album. You know, there's there's so many rabbit holes and, and games of whack-a-mole that the parents play. And so what it really boils down to is your relationship. Do your children know they can come to you with anything and your first reaction will be to yell at them, punish them, freak out, take away their access, but instead help them, help them navigate, you know, the fact that good kids sometimes make bad choices. Well, Titania Jordan from Bark Technologies, thank you so much for bringing this issue to light and for the great work you guys are doing over there to keep our kids safe. Mike, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you for helping keeping families safe. My pleasure. For Neighborhood TV, I'm Mike Pachenik. Mm-hmm.